Hi there and welcome back. In this video, we're turning this boring old cloud car terminal into a useful dashboard. We can use the built-in status line command to display all sorts of useful information right here in the terminal. As an example, we can see the model, we can see a progress bar showing our context token usage, as well as a percentage. Of course, we can also see the values over here, the branch that we're currently in, and the project folder. And this can be extended in any way you want in terms of information or just using different colors. And the irony is this is something a lot of developers are not using and it's actually incredibly useful. In the previous video, we discussed the importance of using the context command. So this is where we can see our current token usage. And the rule of thumb is to try to not exceed this limit because the more tokens you consume, the worse the quality of the responses become, and eventually Claude will actually run the compact command, which will summarize the conversation, dropping out a lot of important context. Now, it can be disruptive to stop what you're doing, to first run this context command to see if you're still safe. So to have this information show up down here is extremely useful. And if you're a Claude Code Power user who likes to have multiple Claude Code sessions running at the same time, it's definitely useful to be able to see the branch that you're currently on, as well as the current project folder. Trust me, this saved my bacon so many times and prevented me from pushing changes to the wrong branch. So let's have a look at setting all of this up. And it's actually really simple. If you just want to use my exact status line, then I'll upload the scripts to my community, which is linked in the description below. But you will be able to recreate all of this yourself. It's really, really simple. And in this video, I will show you how to do it in both Windows, Mac, and Linux. In Windows, I'm just going to start Claude in a PowerShell terminal. So let's run this. And at the moment, we just have the default view, nothing fancy. So what we need to do is run the command status line. But before we press enter, there's actually one tip I do want to give you. And this applies to all operating systems. It's definitely going to save you a bit of a headache setting this up. Simply say, I am using Windows, or in your case, it might be Linux or Mac or WSL. So just tell it what environment you're currently in. And this is important because I noticed the status line agent actually has no idea what commands to call based on your operating system. It might assume that you're actually on Linux and then you get all sorts of errors. Another issue is that the status line agent might decide to create a script in this local project folder, which is not very useful. We want this information to be available globally across all of our projects. And then there's one final thing I do want to add to this, and that is, Please use a separate PS1 file for the script. For Linux, Mac, or WSL, you can simply say .sh. Now, the reason for this is that Claude is actually going to edit your global settings file to make all of this work. And these scripts can actually be massive. And I really don't like it just sort of adding everything on a single file. So this will create a separate file for the status line script and then only update the settings file to reference that script. Now, because I'm using Windows, I'll just enter PS1. That's just a PowerShell script. So let's run this. This will now run the status line agent. And this agent will try to find the location of your global Claude settings file. Now on Windows, I found that the status line agent can sometimes fail to detect the correct user folder. As you can see here, it's saying that it added the files to this folder, which is definitely incorrect. This should be the name of your actual user file. For example, on my PC, if I go to the users folder, my user is actually Leon. And in this folder, we have our .cloud subfolder. So this is actually the correct location. So what I recommend is copying the path to that folder. And then I'm just going to tell Cloud, I think you added the files to the wrong folder. This is the correct user folder. Now let's paste that in. I'm just going to approve all of these commands. And cool, the agent just created this very simple status line down here, which isn't all that useful and it doesn't look great. But now we can actually customize it. So again, I'm going to call the status line command and say, our current status line isn't very useful. What other information can you display in the status line? And this is really useful. It's not giving us all of the available data that we can display in our status line. So if you want, you can simply go through all of this and add whatever you want. 
I'm going to say the following. Please add these to the status line in order. Let's do the model name. Let's do a progress bar, percentage context used, tokens. Let's also view the Git branch and the project name. Let's send this. And awesome, it's actually updated the status line. And if we have a look down here, we can indeed see all of those values. So there's the model name, the branch is correct. You can see the project folder, but it does seem like the progress bar and this percentage isn't quite correct. If I go to slash context, we're actually using about 25,000 tokens and that's sitting around 12%. So let's just say the progress bar and the percentage doesn't seem correct to me. We're actually using this amount of tokens and percentage of the context window. Okay, that's fine. It seems like the agent was just using the wrong property for this, which is not an issue. All right, now this looks way better. I noticed that it wasn't getting these figures correct. So what I asked Tor to do was to write the status line structure to a debug file. And it should then look at that structure to figure out what to do. So just to show you what happened, the agent said that the structure might be different than expected. So let me create a debug version that writes the raw JSON to a file so we can see exactly what properties are available. And by the way, this is just a general tip when dealing with cloud code. If you're uncertain of what's going on and the agent can't seem to figure it out itself, ask it to write any useful information to a log file or a debug file, and it then needs to reference that file to figure out what's going on. So in this instance, it added a bit of code to write the entire structure to this debug file. So if we open up this file, we can see the session ID, the transcript path, and we can see the model name in this structure, the workspace directory, etc. And then using the contents in that file, it was eventually able to fix this issue. So these figures are now correct. We can also make this look a little bit better by changing the colors of each of these features. So I'm just going to say, the status line looks correct now. Thank you very much. Please can we make this look a little bit better by assigning different colors to each of the different data points in the status line. This is such a simple command, but I think it makes such a big difference. And that's really it. You can add or remove data at any time. Now, the process is very much the same for Linux, Mac, and WSL with one difference. You need to have JQ installed on your operating system. Cloud Code uses this when writing the script and to parse the JSON structures. Without it, it will write the script, but the information won't actually show up in the status line. And installing it is actually really simple. Depending on your operating system, you'll simply run this command. So I've got the commands for Mac OS and Linux and Windows as well. So for example, in this WSL terminal, all I really have to do is run that command. I'll enter my sudo password and that's it. That will install JQ. Then we can open up Claude and just like we did with Windows, we can run the command status line, but then we just have to add, I am using WSL or in your case, Linux or Mac, it doesn't matter. Set this up globally, use a separate .sh file for the script. And then we can send this. And cool, just like with Windows, it added this information to the status line. And now you can simply go through the same steps that we implemented on Windows. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more Cloud Code content. Also, if you want to download my status files for Windows and Linux, I'll upload those to my community. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.